already. I don't know, so I may be moving. But I'm like, I don't know, I'm attached to this like studio space now, but it's no, an apartment, it's cool. not gonna be forever. So I gotta figure out some way to, to transport this yeah. <laughs> to some to some. Mine too. is in the basement of my house. Hell yeah. And I have a finished basement, so it's like nice mm-hmm. and cozy. And I'm like, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. So also that's also where I record and stuff too, and you don't want the fan on or mm-hmm. anything because it obviously gets so yeah. Yeah. True. yeah. I'm not quite too picky about audio. Like I think if to me, if it was 90 degrees today, I would just put a fan on and be yeah. like, whatever, I'd rather hang out and be comfortable than yeah. have perfect audio. Because it's not going to be perfect audio anyway. I'm not yeah. good enough at audio yeah. to get it perfect. <laughs> so, yeah. But no, I'm, I haven't quite figured that one out yet. So, at some point, I'll get some changes coming soon. But the change is incoming, actually. So, we are here, episode 19 uh, of Something From Everyone with Nick, is it Viglione? Am I yeah, saying that right? that's it. Nick Viglione, uh, my man. So, graphic design, music dad podcast yep. <laughs> we got a hundred things going everything. on everything uh so excited to dive into it all today um we're talking about uh episode number or changes and all the stuff and all the different stuff here uh so yeah episode 20 is an exciting milestone to me so that's the next Ooh. one as i said 20 mi- 20 episodes is like my uh have no repeat guests in the first 20 episodes yeah. just like force myself to like branch out and ask people who I was like, I don't know, homies with, but like to me asking Sean and Jay was like a fucking no brainer. It's easy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then I've slowly tried to be like, okay, what if this person, what if that person would be a little more bold in it? Uh, but I'm also excited now. So it's like, yeah, 20 was my mile. So I'm like, okay, once I do well, that, then I can start integrating, integrating homies back in again. Yeah. Well, first um, it means, you know, 20 people. Yeah. <laughs> that was the other <laughs> Which thing. Which is yeah. hard. Yeah. It would be easy to just go through half hearted and like the yeah. homies and homies. And it's like, <laughs> All right, that's not quite not yeah. quite the goal here. I gotta gotta be a little more bold and brave with it. Um, but exactly. it is fun to check in with the homies and yeah, catch in with the homies like we all did last night, dude. Yeah, Fucking that was a blast. Segue dude. and a half. So last night we were at the Webster Underground yep. for a Dreamwake headliner, sold out. Yep. Um, I always am jealous of vocalists who can list all the bands who performed. So my <laughs> best guess it was Dreamwake, Half Hearted, No Eyes Seen, Pull the Curtain, Chain Twist, Liminal. That's it. Am I missing yep. anything? No, I think that's I think that's everyone. That would, if it's not, I'm sorry. If it's not, they were headlining. <laughs> yeah. And I just want to, want to tell you. They were a yeah. secret guest headliner. Yeah. And I don't want to leak that to the world. Yeah. Um, but hell yeah, dude. How did that go last night for you guys? It was killer, dude. Hell it was yeah. awesome. I mean, it's been a minute since we had a show like that. Yeah. That was packed. Yeah. Um, we're kind of playing some stuff that we used to play, which mm-hmm. you obviously know. And I think that's what we needed to do. We need yeah. to get back to that sound. Mm-hmm. Um, we experimented, man. I mean, 2020... Yeah. It was yeah. weird for everyone. We tried some new music. We tried yeah. a new sound. Um, and it was cool. We mm-hmm. saw some success with it. Um, but we kind of merged it all into what we're doing now. Mm-hmm. And it's like the perfect fit. Yeah. It was yeah. fun to see it get heavy again. And yeah. I think I'm, I'm certainly biased in that sense. But I think, yeah. <laughs> am I correct that your roots are kind of more in the pop punk side yeah, of so stuff? So it's heavier. actually funny. So um, when Half Hearted first started, like probably, what, nine, ten years ago now, Sean asked me to that be in it. That seems unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. So he asked me to be in it. And I... I just wasn't into heavy stuff. Mm -hmm. I never really was. Um, So I passed and they did some really awesome things. And then the time came back around for an opportunity for me to join. And it's like, sure, let's do it. So it was cool though, because we got to experiment, like I said, with that stuff that um, I was more familiar with. Um, So yeah, it was cool. Uh, Perfect place to dive in. You mentioned um, the early days of Sean inviting you to join Half Hearted. I believe you yeah. told the same story here, and I wanted to get it from your perspective. Yeah. I believe it was something of like someone's in a theater. Like I think he was like proposing, yes. asking a girlfriend, and you were helping with the lights or something. Yeah, yeah. Am I totally wrong? No. What so was, yeah, yeah. So in high school, um, I was friends with a girl named Holly, okay. who was Sean's girlfriend at the time. Yep. But um, we were actually at lunch, and Holly's like my boyfriend sings he's like the best ever and i'm like yeah okay <laughs> sure <laughs> sure and she's like you should come hang out i think you guys would be friends because mm-hmm. at this point i had a band going but we needed that one person so yeah. um it may have been after school or maybe it was like lunch or something we went down to the auditorium and i walked in and it was like it was like a rom-com it was hilarious so sean's on stage it's only him Classic. and it's it's acapella and he sang Fall Out boy Hell um, yeah. do you know what song it was uh, oh my God! What is it? Grand Theft Auto, maybe? Okay. Is that the? Is I'm not sure. Is, I know that one, but I'm sure it's that some, a song. Yeah. I'm, Where I, is your boy tonight? I hope. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. So <laughs> Sean's singing that. For that. Yeah. Man. Right. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> um, and he was and he was good. Yeah. He was good. Yeah. I mean, good for like high school, right? Yeah. I mean, because he's obviously awesome now. Yeah. But no, that was yeah. the best performance he's ever gave. Yeah. No. But good <laughs> in high school, course, it yeah. was great. I'm like hell yeah, and then. 
it was within like 10 minutes and like our shirts were off and I'm like, okay, this is, <laughs> this is it. This is the guy that we got to have. And then what, 13, 14 years later and we're still best friends. So. Hell yeah, dude. It's yeah. so funny. It was yeah. Awesome. I, uh, as I was, yeah, kind of going through memory lane and thinking about today, I remember that Sean mentioned that. I was like, dude, I got to get your yeah. side of this kind of bizarre <laughs> yeah, origin story. Yeah, super weird. But we have so many stories like that Yeah, where it's just like, we just did some crazy things. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. But uh, it's cool that it all came in together in the Homie yeah. Fest last night. Uh, it was fun to see you guys back on stage. Has it been? Yeah. I feel like it's been a minute since you played. Yeah, we did a random show a few months ago. It was like on like a Thursday or something. Mm-hmm. We opened for Secrets, I think it was. Right, right, right. Yeah. And then we did that co-headliner with Anthems last year. Mm-hmm. Um, but we were kind of getting back into it then. We didn't mm-hmm. have the new stuff we have out. So yeah. this was like a perfect end to finally dropping some new music mm-hmm. to the sound that we have now. So yeah, it was, it was a really good night. And I understand that like th- second support, direct support is almost like the best <laughs> spot in the lineup. Cause you don't have all the pressure of headlines. Yeah. You get a lot of the benefits <laughs> of the fuller audience. Yeah. You don't have to open the show. No, it's cool. I mean, especially with a band like dream wake, they're killer. Yeah. Um, they, they always draw. Dude, I was so impressed. Yeah, so, everyone last night, dude, I feel like they, I haven't seen everyone in a minute. I've yeah. been as many shows lately and dude, yeah. yeah, I was so impressed with everyone last night. Yeah, and I only met a lot of these people through the band Mm because I didn't really go to shows like that, obviously. Um, Mm -hmm. So until I started to play with these guys, and they're all just awesome dudes. And Mm -hmm. that's why that scene is so cool. Because you you can have a show like that, and it's not just a show. Everyone's hanging out. Everyone's having fun. Yeah, Yeah, it's awesome. It almost feels like a house party. Like It's it's not. It's in a professional venue, but it has that vibe of like, oh, I kind of know everyone here. And even if I don't know you, I know someone you're talking to. And by that extent, yeah, we're in the same circle together. everyone supports each other. So it's cool. So you know that... They're not going to walk out for your set. They're going to yeah. be there in the front watching. Yeah. They're going to post on Instagram. And it's cool. I think it's an yeah. interesting, uh, there's a sentiment of rising tides lift all ships. And I think yeah. that's what we see last night when, when Dreamwake sells out the underground. It makes everyone's life better. Yeah. It makes the Webster more inclined to give half-hearted a chance there. No, I have seen yep. whoever else wants that opportunity Absolutely. or can earn that opportunity. Yeah. Uh, and it also, everyone makes money on merch that night. Like It helps yep. that night and it helps going forward in the bigger yep. picture. Uh, I think that's interesting, though, is that like that community is so fragile in a sense. That all it yeah. takes is one band to to walk to be a dick, and that whole thing. And to me, that's the crazy part is like it exists and it is so fragile. And like I think it's a testament to how good everyone is. Is like even if such a a thing where it is so fragile, it's like no, nah, even the idiots haven't quite been yep. able to shake this. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing too, because it, it's as easy as one man, yeah. just one person, even one person in a band, yeah. just being a dick, and you're like, yeah. I don't want to play with them. And we all know that that guy. In yeah, some right. Yeah, we all know that guy, that and you guy. just hope yeah. it's not you. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, wait, did I say something wrong? No, you're good, <laughs> dude. I always, uh, I always have that weird like. I think when you're in a band, you have like your teammates. And as, yeah. a, as a photographer coming into the scene, like I didn't quite have the, the social ties that I think True. I do now. So I always felt like a free agent kind of. And it was this weird thing of like, oh, I hope I'm not the guy who's punishing them, like intruding yeah, yeah. on the hang. And like, I think they are cool with me here, yeah. but how much are they cool? And how much, yeah, overstaying the welcome. Um, but yeah, it's been great that it is such a community that is so yeah. welcoming and it's enticing awesome. for us all to be a part of. Absolutely. Um, did anything go surprising on stage? So I was talking with someone else who performed <laughs> last night. Uh, and you might know some, you might not, and I'll happily tell you who later, but I'll maintain their anonymity <laughs> for a moment. Yeah. Um, but they said the stage was so hot that they got off stage, just went outside and threw up. Oh, and geez. it was one of those like, <laughs> damn, I didn't like, yeah, we would never know that. And to yeah. me, it was like, you crushed it on stage. You did incredible. Yeah. But their Thank experience you. was so suffocating. It's so yeah, yeah, troubling that like they went on stage and yeah, we're fucked up. I don't know if your stomach was the problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did anything surprise you last night? Tech issues, no, whatever. No, not for us. No, it was good. It does get hot up there. Yeah. It's surprisingly hot. Yeah. So the first show I played with Half Hearted yeah. in like 2018, whatever, hmm. it's been years since I was up on stage. Yeah. I forgot how bad it is. Yep. And you're moving around, you're sweating. It's, so if you have anything wrong in your freaking stomach, <laughs> it's going to come right out. Absolutely. Yep. But no, in terms yeah. of tech wise it was all good hell yeah also oh, good yeah. to hear i always yeah i've never quite appreciated how hot it can be upstairs uh, upstairs up yeah. on stage <laughs> uh because in my brain it's like you have the space and that to me like to yeah. me i feel hot because i'm compressed by people like the, yeah yeah my my peak experience was a sold out uh bear tooth show at the underground oh, and it geez. just i felt like a sardine and it was in like 2017 18 so it was like right before oh, I, they were an arena band i was they gonna say because they're like of, they're like selling out crazy exactly, rooms right now right. and they're so, headlining the underground whatever the the cap was my maybe there was a few extra people in the room uh, yeah so it felt just incredible and like yeah to me in that moment it's always like if i could just be on stage and have the air and it's interesting yeah, yeah. where it's like, no, even the air doesn't help. Yeah, because the lights up there are so hot. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the thing. Like, it's yeah. one, you're obviously 
um, going crazy upstairs, yeah. you know, trying to yeah. jump. I, I freaking did it too upstairs. Up, <laughs> up, sta- up just, on stage. I ruined it forever. That's so yeah. funny. Um, but yeah, the lights kill you. Yeah. Yeah, they're hot up there. Yeah. Um, damn, dude. Is that one of the hotter stages you've played on? Where does that... Um, there's been some... It was more of a... A combination when 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 we were touring down in um, down south, we were, did a couple shows in Texas, and yeah. you would think that it was in the fall, so it's not going to be as mm-hmm. hot. You, it, that room got like beaming in there. Yeah, yeah, dude, it just I went did, up a storm. Uh, when I was with Call at Home, we did a couple shows like coming back up the East Coast, and we yeah. played through some of the Carolinas, and uh, I think it was Alabama, one of the Carolinas, and West Virginia. It's had bars that were still smoking on the inside. Oh really? And it was the craziest thing to me. Of like, That's bizarre. It was yeah. It was like walking to a parallel universe of walking yeah. and like everyone is in there, just cigarettes out, cigars out, c- ashtrays on every table. And it's like I don't the, think I could do that. I don't think I could play there. I didn't like. Yeah. They they obviously played their set, and to me it was like I was in the van. And I came in for half of one song and like half another song, and kind of like did yeah. the bare minimum to make it happen. And yeah, I don't know how they. How they made it happen, they yeah, did. Yeah, because being on stage and having to breathe all that in, yeah, oh, that's all. I mean, I guess if you smoke, it's fine, but none of them I, did. But none I, of them, but were. I don't. So yeah, yeah, that was awful. Yeah, jeez, it seemed gnarly. Uh, yeah. So that's always yeah. I I was always wondering if the, the Webster is like um, in that as tier of bad, gotcha. or if it's kind of a more normal level. Yeah, of Yeah, I mean it. It was pretty normal. Yeah, I mean I think if we toured in the summer, I yeah. think we'd have some different stories. Yeah, but um, we, but the fall was good. So we had a couple of days that were hot, mm-hmm. but it was it was good. Hi, was this a full U.S. run? Yeah, with which crazy? It's five years ago now. Which is it, it really? It, yeah, it was 2018. It, it's my children, my bride, and three meet secrets as well. Yep. Yeah, it was my children, same. my bride, secrets, uh, earth groans. Right, the other um, homies. Yeah, yeah, I'm missing them. I'm probably missing one, but I think. Uh, they probably don't listen. Those were the three. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so that was good. Yeah, that was fun. Damn, um, five years ago. Yeah, dude, that was, that's crazy. Like, so um, that was a big moment for me, though, because I mm-hmm. quit my like salary job to Damn. go tour. Okay. And my mom and dad were like, Are you sure about that? I'm okay. like, eh. <laughs> But I'm so glad I did because yeah. if, if I missed out on that, I would have been so bummed. Is that the same job you're at now? Were you able to no, get it, it was back a or... different job. I, okay. I, I did end up getting that job back okay. when I came home but i did leave that job but, what was that um, conversation like with the with your manager i don't know if you like, were you a manager at the time or yeah. was your superior yeah so this was with my district manager i was okay. running a store and i mentioned the idea i knew i wanted to go but mm-hmm. i wanted to kind of test the waters first so sorry this retail is this yeah a retail yeah, store yeah okay. yeah this was the vitamin shop okay yeah so i uh I told my boss, I said, hey, because she knew I was in a band. I go, mm-hmm. we have this opportunity to tour. It's like a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Yeah. If I decided to do it, is there an option to come back? And she was kind of like, eh, probably not, but like I would consider it. At this point, I already told them I was going to go, so I was going to go regardless. So and I, I said you've been a good employee for them for a couple of years yeah, at this point. Like you have yeah, I was there for a couple of years, two, yeah. two, three years. So, yeah, it was not. It was more so probably like an HR thing, like mm-hmm. do we – Mm-hmm. Let him go, this and that. Of so, course, yeah. Um, it was actually re- it was really funny. So, I uh, posted the tour announcement on 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 Instagram. And this is before I had already told them that, or before I told them I was going to leave. <laughs> sure. And my DM, I'm not sure how she found out. Mm-hmm. She made an Instagram account and commented on it, and it was like, "Hey, Nick, this looks fun." That and I'm like, oh no, <laughs> that's some breach of some law. Yeah, I'm not like, how expert, did she? But oh no, that so can't be allowed. I had to call her and be like. At this point, I'm trying to sell it as if I wasn't lying to her. So I was like, uh, I said, um, no, I was just sharing it because I'm still in the band. I'm not saying I'm going, but I got to support the guys, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm just announcing the tour. I'm not necessarily sure. going. And she's like, okay. Yeah, I'm like, sure. All right. So I'm like, how do I sell this now? So like two weeks went by and I'm like, I think I made that choice. I got to go. Mm-hmm. And she's like, all right, just call me when you're back. Yeah. And I called her and she was like, I don't have anything for you. Mm-hmm. So I called her back for like two more months after that. And then she finally gave me the job back. Okay. Because I th- th- that was a rough go for a bit. I bet. Yeah. That was a rough go. I had a apartment and bills and mm-hmm. no job. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was tough. Yeah. It was tough. Damn. That's, uh, I'm always surprised by how many successful bands or how many band success stories are, have a job that supported them behind it. Yeah. But it's kind of an interesting where you said you did end up getting that job back and like, uh, I would assume, yeah, you left not knowing you'd have the job back, but it sounds like there was some thought in your mind of like, I may, if I'm polite yeah. to this woman, if I'm kind to this woman, like yeah. I think I have enough good faith built up here that they exactly. might bend some rules or make some exceptions yeah. for me here. 
Uh, and I think that's an interesting thing that's universal to a lot of bands. Yeah. And it kind of makes me think of the, the manager at Dunkin' Donuts who doesn't realize how important that kindness is. Yep. Um, and yeah, it's kind of an interesting butterfly effect, so to speak, yeah. of like, yeah, just be good at this and like it'll pay off somehow in some, yeah. some nebulous way. Yeah, I mean, that especially, I mean, this happens in any point of life, but especially at a job, you don't burn any, any bridges. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. I, I run into it all the time where I just recently, um, well, probably like, seven, eight months ago, someone put in their two week notice, but then didn't work the notice. And they really kind of like left me hanging. Yeah. Recently they texted me, Hey, can I get that job? Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you do not burn that bridge, man. Yeah. You don't, you can't. Yeah. I think it's the same in the, yeah. the music community that we were talking about earlier at the Webster. It's like, yeah, we don't quite know. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. To me watching Dreamwake last night, it's like, Oh, they're going somewhere. Absolutely. And it's like, um, yeah, it is a great, a great ship to be on board of, yep. but also, for everyone else who was there last night, it's like, I hope you are nice to them because they're yeah. going to need a direct support at some point again. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's yeah. an interesting, like, yeah, just be nice. Like it's, and I don't, I don't want to be nice for a self-serving reason, but I oh, think it course. is also like a, yeah, we don't quite know where kindness can amount to in the yeah. big picture. Mm -hmm. um, hell yeah, dude. Uh, I wanted to, okay, so we have the new half-hearted sound. We kind of yep. touched on it and then I derailed us as, as I do. That's my specialty <laughs> here. Um, New half-hearted sound. So I wanted to touch on one. Yeah, you kind of mentioned that like the pop punk side of stuff is more your yeah. home. Uh, talk to me about getting into the metal side of stuff now. As the breakdown started to come back, like it's, yeah. is it exciting? Is it fun? Is it scary? Like what is that? No, it's fun. Yeah, okay. it's fun. Um, at first, it was weird. So when I first joined Half Hearted, um, I came from playing bass. It was four notes. It was the mm -hmm. same root progression for every song because mm -hmm. it's fast. It's pop punk. Yeah. And then Jay writes these insane riffs. It's the craziest. And yeah. I, I'm like, I have to learn that now. So five years in, I, I'm I'm better at it. Yeah. But I still text him, Hey, can you send me how to play that again? Because yeah. I just it, it's a different mindset. I my whole life I didn't write like that. Mm -hmm. So it, it took a minute, but I'm so I'm so glad that I did because now I feel like in my solo stuff that I do still, mm -hmm. I'm a little, I'm, I'm, I'm pushed to do things that I wouldn't have done before mm -hmm. uh, because I'm doing a sound that I didn't do before. So I it was it, cool. I think it's really important. Uh, I think I enjoy that for me. It's a video person of like with each band I take on, it forces me to take on a different voice in my work. Yeah. And I think a lot of times with a band, when you are committed to this one thing, it's like you need half hearted to grow and you need all hands on deck. But for half hearted to grow, it's important for you to have a solo thing where you can express and get this idea yeah. out and it all kind of feeds back in. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's interesting to watch those, like, uh, I don't know, the different things feed into each other in that way. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I don't do as much writing in Half-Hearted because um, Jay and Sean are just, like, a powerhouse. Yeah. It, it, they just, they get one idea, mm -hmm. and they it just goes. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's this full song yeah. in, like, an hour. I'm like, you guys are crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. So, but it's perfect. So I don't mind that because they have these awesome ideas mm -hmm. and it and it sounds perfect. Mm -hmm. And then I get to go home and write some stuff that wouldn't work for half hearted anyway. Yeah. So it's I get it in both aspects and it's good. And my understanding is that with the half hearted, it's not necessarily writing. I'm I'm sure you influence and give feedback here, like it's yeah. not that you're hands off, but I think you're very hands on with the visual side of the graphics of yeah. the media and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Is that all still in house, still yeah. done by so you? So I've been doing our artwork for the whole five years that I've been in the band, mm -hmm. all of the like social promos and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Jay any, still runs the Instagram. Do you have any, like formal background in graphic design or is that just a hobby? No, it was just a hobby. Okay. Yeah. So it was actually when in my first band years ago, um, <clears throat> like every kid, you don't have any money. So are we like 12? Are we 16? What are we oh, talking pro about? Probably like, yeah, high school. Okay. It's like 16 to 18. Okay. Um, and you want to have that presence where you look like you know what you're doing mm -hmm. that's expensive you got to pay for art you got to pay for a freaking video you got to pay for everything yeah. so i got to learn one of these skills yep. so that's one less thing that we have to pay for mm -hmm. so i picked up graphic design it the first couple were rough of course it yeah, was yeah. rough it's just like a like stock image <laughs> and like the name on the front mm -hmm. but um yeah i've been doing that man probably for 13, 14 years now. Oh, hell yeah. So that um, followed music, you learn yeah. guitar or bass, I assume bass is yeah. first? Yeah, um, guitar and bass. Um, so I, for my solo stuff, I play all the instruments. Okay. Um, Do you drum as well? 
No. Okay. Those I map out. Yeah. So I understand how the drums work. Mm-hmm. I don't have that skill. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think you could sit at a kit and make it happen? Or is it just like, my brain doesn't compute it. Like I, yeah. I would like to learn drums because I feel like it's so foreign that I want to like violate, like I want to yeah. break the part of my brain that says this thing's impossible. Yeah. But it does feel impossible to me. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I really don't think I could. I can do a couple things. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to have a kit at the house mm-hmm. um, years ago, so I could probably do a couple things. But okay. uh, I mean, like bare minimum. Sure. And then I watch, you know, all these bands, and I'm like, it's just crazy. To me. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm trying to make sure I'm in time on bass, <laughs> which is like four strings, and they're like going left and right. It's it's just nuts. It is. It is. Uh, when does bass like get going for you then, or like what age are you when you start picking up? That was early. I was like. 11, 12. Um, it was first, it was actually guitar. Um, but then my cousin also played guitar and we wanted to make a band. So I'm mm-hmm. like, I'll play bass. So, um, picked up bass after that. And then I stuck with that for quite some time. And then I picked up guitar again, you know, after high school. So you're a problem solver. You pick up bass because you yeah. need a bass to pick <laughs> yeah. up graphic design, you need the graphic design. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. I think it's fun that like, <laughs> Yeah, I always assumed that bands are people who are just passionate about music. And it's like, that yeah. is true, but they're also people who are just generally motivated and excited yeah. and interested in learning. And that's what makes the band successful because if oh, people absolutely. are only interested in music, it's just not quite enough to get yeah. things going and oh, make things happen. I know. I got a lot of friends that are insanely talented. They can play anything, but they don't have that extra drive to turn it into something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or even to write their own music. Mm-hmm. They can like hear it, learn it, play it, it's done, and they're amazing, yeah. but they don't have that extra push. And yeah. I feel like if you don't have that, you're not going to make it. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's... that's and that's in anything. That's obviously. not just in a band. But if you don't have that extra push to um, learn that extra like tool or, or call that extra person and go, how do you, how'd you do that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, for me, that the my peak experience there is through the, the thick of the pandemic, through the thick of quarantine is forced myself to learn Blender uh, yeah. as a 3D software of like, I want to work with bands. I like this thing that I'm doing. There's no way for me to have <clears throat> someone over. I can't go somewhere to do a thing. Like how do I still create something that is accessible and usable for bands without being in the same room yeah. with them ever? Uh, and so this idea of virtual creation comes along and it was the same thing. That's like, crazy. Uh, it's been so fun. It's been such a wild experience that I think is like, almost jaded my whole view of the world because yeah. I start watching. Um, I think Dexter is one that comes to mind. The I'm, I'm sure you've seen yeah. Dexter. Uh, I could be misremembering the show, but I'm pretty sure it's Dexter. The neighborhood it's filmed in has no trees. It's all really? like this really brand new neighborhood. And as they're filming it, they're like, this feels wrong. <laughs> and they just made the trees. And they just added the whole That's thing crazy. in post. Uh, and tiers of houses, like sheds, garages, fences, like they turned this brand new development that we've all seen when, you know, they're yeah. building new houses in town and they're still yeah. like, d- right on the road from the dirt that hasn't cleared yet. And they turned that into this organic and homegrown and wooded and cozy neighborhood yeah. because that's where Dexter should live. Um, yeah. But now as I watch everything, I'm like, you're like, I wonder what's real and what's not. And nothing is real. It's yeah. the simplest yeah. answer there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the, the messy part. Um, but it's been fun. And that culminates in the voodoo video. Yes. Which I wanted to chat about. Uh, so that was a fun one for me because it was my first attempt at like a fully like photorealistic thing. Yeah. I think before that I'd hidden behind, uh, yeah, with animation if I make it stylized and it, there's yeah. some room for error there because I can just say it was an artistic choice <laughs> instead, of, yeah, right. <laughs> instead of a mistake. Uh, and oftentimes that was the case. And so I go back to... I did a video for Fever 333 a couple I years ago. I saw that one, yeah. Uh, and the background sick. there, and they wanted a whole city on fire. And it was one of those, like, oh, that's not, <laughs> You're like, I don't that's not going to happen. Yeah. And they said they wanted, like, a cartoon style. And I was like, okay, that, that now gives me a, a layer to play with here where it's like I can almost do it badly because that's the best I can do, but it kind of meets It almost the, fits it. Yeah, it meets the criteria. Um, but it was very, like, unsatisfying in the sense of, like, no, I want to – I wanted to build a city on fire. I just couldn't. I, couldn't, I had yeah. to, yeah, modify it in some way. So when Voodoo comes around, it was this exciting opportunity of like, I think I've now put enough practice to put enough years, enough time to to make that possible. Um, and I, I think it worked out. I'm happy with that came yeah, out. That was awesome. Um, but it was a fun to take the new heavy elements of Half Hearted. And so we got the, like the grungy basement set up and then contrast yeah. that with like the brighter stuff. And that's yeah. why I think green screen is really exciting to me of like, we couldn't go to a top of a mountaintop. We did that no. in February ish, January, yeah. something like that. Like there was no mountaintop they were going to climb. There was no way no. that Parker was going to get his drums his up, there. up there. Yeah, dude, I wasn't going to fly a drone. Yeah. Like we were going to wait for golden hour and get all yep. that done in 10 minutes or whatever. Um, and that's where the green screen stuff is really exciting to me. Well, it's like, fun. Cause you'll laugh. Cause I 
a couple responses. You're like, where'd you go for that? Mm-hmm. I'm like, nope, it's not real. That's been like, the like, what best, do you mean it's not real? The best compliment. Because yeah. if, if you don't know what goes into that, mm-hmm. you have no idea that that could just be made. Yep. So they're like, where'd you go? I'm like, it's not real. Like, yeah. it was just made. You're like, mm-hmm. that, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. And it's awesome. Yeah. I think it's cool. I think it's yeah. weird. Uh, it's we talk about like the trickery of social media and a lot of times talking yeah. about like makeup and filters. Yeah. And to me, that's another version of it of like, if I, I think if I printed out the, the images of the video, you wouldn't look at it and be like, Oh, this could be Mount Washington. Like you would look at it and yeah. be like, Oh, okay. I can see, yeah. But when it's contrasted with the grungy flashing basement stuff and there's kind of a quick pause of this thing, yeah. suddenly it, yeah, your brain short circuits and doesn't quite scan those details. Cause you're so inundated by this other stuff. And it's happening so fast. Yeah. And that's uh, been another interesting principle of like, <clears throat> Oh, I don't have to do it. I don't have to make the best thing. I just have to build a world where this thing doesn't stand out. Yeah. Uh, which again gets me to the same media stuff, like how weird it is and how, um, yeah, just how vulnerable we are to deception and yeah. media. Oh, absolutely. And it's, it's bad. Like you gotta have, you gotta be in the right mindset to be able to separate it. Mm-hmm. Um, cause you can see something and go, man, I'm not, am, am I good enough for what I'm doing? Mm-hmm. Do I need to be, <clears throat> excuse me, do I need to be, um, at a different point in my life? Mm-hmm. But it's based off of someone you don't even know online. Yeah. And it's, it could be all, it could all be fake. Then I'm turning the graphic yeah. design and the music sense. Yeah. There's a, there's a point where you've <clears throat> seen the thing so much. You've heard the song so many times that it just isn't good anymore because you've consumed yeah. it too many times. <clears throat> How do you work to like remedy that when you're working on the graphic design, the new <clears throat> half-hearted artwork for the album in 2030, if there's ever another yeah. project, um, like whatever the, yeah, the next thing is you're working on when it is important to you and you're burnt out. What is that moment? Like, how do you process that moment? Yeah. I mean, I'm lucky that the guys are really cool and they like a lot of my ideas. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I don't usually have to work, um, on a bunch of different takes and everything. Mm -hmm. So I don't ever feel like I'm stressing out when it comes to the art for the band, at least I'll give them a couple ideas. They'll suggest a couple tweaks and then Mm -hmm. it's done. It takes me a couple hours. Perfect. Where on the music side though, Sean will send a million mixes. Mm -hmm. If I open up my text right now, (laughs) the fog, I have like the fog version one through like 97. And to me, they all sound the same. Yep. And I always laugh because I mean, Sean has these, it's amazing ears for that stuff, Mm -hmm. which he has to, um, but I'll laugh because I'm like, Sean, that sounds exactly the same to me. But he's like, no, no, if you listen really closely, there's this one little level here. And I'm like, man, I'm so glad that we have you. That's funny. (laughs) That's funny. It's cool that even like as a, as a producer, there's still another level of production that you're looking at going, that's not how my brain operates. Like that's not how (laughs) you would approach a song in your own solo project. And not that there's a a better or worse, but just the different ways we approach the same problems and hear the same problems and yeah, solve the same issues that every song runs into at some yeah. point. Well, I think that's why I gravitated so much towards pop punk because it was always so raw and it was fun and fast and mm-hmm. you could make mistakes and it was almost laughed at. Like, So Blink-22 is my favorite band and they always have been and they're awful live. They're so bad. They just did Coachella. They came back for their first show I'm back. I'm so happy you said that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they, so they came back. Um, Tom, who left the band, is back in the band. And it was so cool to see them, and it was they were so bad. I mean, they, they were tight for Blink, mm-hmm. but so bad. And I'm laughing at that because only certain bands can get a, can get away with that. And that's why pop punk for me was so good because like I wanted to learn something quick and just get it done. I didn't want to initially take the time to master it, and pop punk mm-hmm. was perfect for that. That's so. I am so relieved that you said that. I grew up a good Charlotte kid, so to yeah. me, Blink was like the other side of the fence of like yeah. we're kind of siblings in the same ballpark, but we're not at yeah. all the same same audience, same fan base. And I always had that thought of like, yeah, Blink and some like are in this category of bands that I I like, and the singles are good and yeah. cool, whatever. <clears throat> but I've never once seen them but impressed. <laughs> no, it's all about uh, them just making jokes on but, stage and just making a fool of themselves. It is. And it's great. Yeah, and I think especially now is. Uh, I'm sure they were better in their prime. And at this point they have kind of accepted of like, no, we're grown men. We're enjoying it. We're going to perform. But yeah, it's relieving. Sometimes I see people celebrating the Coachella performance and it's like, did they, did we hear, like, were they celebrating the same thing I'm celebrating here? Yeah, No, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely something that um, you need to appreciate on a different level. Cause like for me, it was having Tom back and blank. I mean, and then just hearing them on stage playing those old songs and you're like, all right, cool. But bad <laughs> the audacity of me to be talking shit about blink right now so the other part of the fever 333 story that's been in my brain recently uh is that the video is done like 
uh, so I was doing it under another guy uh, named Anthony Tran, who's now touring with, I think, like, Pierce the Veil. He's continued to do awesome things. Oh, okay. So it was his video that he, like, I was doing under him, so I did a lot of the visual stuff and sent it to him for, like, the final edit and putting the final pieces together. Um, so the video's done, and me and him had been kind of going back and forth, and he was the one going back and forth with the band and label and doing all the hard legwork, and yeah. I kind of the easy, like, he was just telling me the summarized, easy version of stuff. Gotcha. And so the video is going to drop the next day or in two days or something. And I get a call from him at midnight. Uh, and it had been a gnarly revision process of just like, I think it was a 120-hour video in a week Jeez. kind of thing. of just yeah, like that's rough. It just, yeah, just exporting all night, waking up in the middle of the night to start the next export and going back to sleep. <laughs> like just this, yeah, just a gnarly thing. So by the end of it, I'm like, I am not even proud of this project anymore. Like I'm just ready for it to, be, ready done, to be done. And yeah. like I'll be happy in a month when I can yeah. recover from it. And I get a text like, hey, dude. We we have more revisions, Ugh. and I was like, it, it was one of those like I'm not gonna say no. It's my first major project, yeah. but also like, I swear this better <laughs> be something. The revisions were because Fever was working with Travis Barker at the time, wow. and so the video had fallen in Travis's lap, and I got a text saying Travis has X Y Z that he wants you to change. That's bizarre. And it was one of those like. <laughs> Anyone, yeah. Anyone else? I would have said no, but it's I Travis don't, Barker. It That's did, nuts. and so it's funny for me to bend over backwards and be sitting here, and be like, "Dude, they weren't even that good." Yeah, and it's like, no, <laughs> my deference is the genuine version of me, and the entertaining yeah. side of me is trying to be cool and coy. And it's like, dude, they were whatever. Yeah, um, but no, it's um, yeah, laughing at my uh, my duality there. Yeah, <laughs> like that's funny. Yeah, that's like, so cool that you know that Travis Barker it was saw, like a peak. saw what you were yeah. doing. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. It was a peak moment for me. It was really yeah. cool, and it was cool in that like the. I don't remember what the notes were. I probably could find them if I really looked. But they were, it wasn't like a make this blue. It was like, hey, what if we, so in that sense, they were really annoying notes to work with. But they were really like thoughtful and creative, which made it much cooler to me that it wasn't just like, he was like, yo, your font stinks. He was like, dude, (laughs) this is cool, but what if? Yeah. And that to me was the coolest part of like, oh, he consumed it. He thought about it. This is in his brain. It's it's something that you don't think about if you're not involved in the you know, art field because mm-hmm. I'll get responses like that for art that I'm doing for someone. And yeah. it's like, Oh, I don't like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, thanks. But yeah. like, why? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, give me something that I can actually work yeah. with and not just, Oh, can you try it in green? It's like, you're not really thinking about it. Yeah. So that's, yeah, it's, 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 it's yeah, I think so the cool. inverse of that is also true of like, don't just tell me it's good. That also is almost yeah. as disrespectful to me just saying it's bad. Of like, yeah, right. <laughs> it, how good was it really? If that's all that yeah. you enjoyed about it, if it was good to tell me that you liked, x or y or um i think if it's good you want to make it great is the other thing like if it's just good then okay what didn't quite get you to the next level or how can we do that um and yeah it's always a a fine line because i say that um i'll get a text at some point in the near future of feedback and i'll be like dude (laughs) i'm done i'm done i'm done i'm done it's Um, like i want the like oh my god that's so freaking awesome dude i I love it and i'm like all right cool now i know that they really loved it and i'm like oh yeah thanks do you ever I don't feel like I could ever accept that. I feel like whenever I get that response, I yeah. feel like they didn't watch the video close enough. Yeah. Is that your experience? Um, probably not with the art because yours is so much more detailed. Mm-hmm. So like there's so much more going into what that's you're fair. doing yeah. that I can I can understand that because yeah. someone just watched, oh, yeah, that's good. And you're like, yeah, but did you catch this part? Did you catch this thing I did, this little yeah. transition? I spent 100 where, hours and you've got exact, 10 letters on it. Exactly. Yeah. Where the artwork, you know on average takes me an hour mm-hmm. and usually I ask for some kind of reference, but mm-hmm. give me five artworks that you like a lot mm-hmm. or that you really want this to look like. So yeah. I can kind of pull from all of them. So I already know going into it that there's going to be elements that they like mm-hmm. because they told me that they wanted that. Yeah. So yeah, I, I but I, I get that though. As I you that. say that a design takes an hour, uh, I'm assuming when you started, design did not take an hour. Assuming when you first started, design yeah. took 12 hours, 12 weeks. Like it took some yeah. like, insane amount of time. Uh, have you been able to be comfortable with that times it decreases? Like for me, as my editing time decreases, I've had a moment of like, am I just like slacking? Am I not working as yeah. hard? And it's like, no, I'm just solving problems more efficiently. Yeah. Or I'm, uh, I'm arriving with more in my brain. I don't have to s- arrive at the edit and then figure it out. As I'm leaving the shoot, yeah. I am putting the pieces in my brain so that once I'm at the computer, it's already it's assembled already in some way. No, I absolutely, yeah, I feel the same way. Um, but it's that saying of like you pay for experience, mm-hmm. um, which you don't understand until you have that experience. Mm-hmm. Cause I thought about it in the past and, um, you know, we've done, we've worked with artists before, or I should say we've recorded before within like old bands and 
we'll get a quote and it seems like it's a lot and then the song's done in like a day and you're like it's a lot something doesn't mesh here but then you hear it oh this is amazing because that guy's been doing this for 15 years yeah and he knows exactly what he wants to do and it's done so once you get to that point in your own art where you feel like um uh i feel comfortable with this being an hour because i know what i'm doing Mm -hmm. and that's a weird feeling too because then you're like it's like that imposter syndrome too, because mm-hmm. at first like you you see other artists and you're like, wow, I can't make that. Yeah, like should I be working harder to get to that point? But mm-hmm. it's also a different kind of art. Maybe I don't want to do that art. Yeah. So it's definitely it's a weird space to be in. Yeah, and I think also the other piece of that is um, I'm always caught up on not just the art, but it's like I I want to make a living doing this, and some yeah. people want to just create the, their masterpiece. And yeah. so some people are going to put out one thing every six months, and like that isn't in my opinion, a good way to make a living. Like it's not going to be sustainable yeah. in the sense of like, I can't do one music video a year. No. But if I did, that thing would be It'd my be masterpiece, right? Yeah. It'd be my, uh, it would give me so much anxiety. Just the thought of putting out one thing a year is like, God, I would stress out so much putting my whole year into three minutes of experience. But, yeah. Um, but there is, yeah, that flip side of like, we're not even comparing, even if we are comparing likely products, the yeah. people making them are in such wildly different situations that, suddenly the two things aren't equal anymore. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's incredible how diverse those things can be. Yeah. Um, hell yeah. You mentioned the fog is out now. Yep. Um, heavy stuff's coming. Uh, I think we, I think we chatted about that. I'm yeah. I'm good there, dude. Uh, let's get into the new pod stuff. So yeah. I know we got uh, Common Ground. Common yeah. Ground with Nick Viglione is coming soon. That's me. Um, so yeah. What, uh, what inspires a new podcast? What kind of, yeah, makes this a thing that you want to get involved with? So I'll actually be honest. So watching yours. I appreciate that. Hell yeah, yeah, really. So these are conversations that I've been having with my friends mm-hmm. and with my family for years. Mm-hmm. I never thought of doing this. Mm-hmm. And then I watched her. I'm like, this is cool. Yeah. My mine obviously won't be filmed, but mm-hmm. I'm like, that. it seemed like something that was a lot of fun. So I decided to do it. I appreciate that. Do you yeah. listen? Uh, one, thank you. I as I watch these back, I realize I'm terrible at accepting compliments when people <laughs> say nice things to me. I just I also I'm, go to the I, next conversation I'm, point because I don't want to sit way. in that. So I'm trying to say thank you and appreciate yeah. that and smell the roses <laughs> once in a while. Um, but hell yeah, dude. So uh, do you listen to a lot of podcasts? Is that kind of where this yeah. comes from also? Yeah. So my I listen to a lot of political podcasts. Okay. So um, we're just kind of stemming into what this is going to be. Mm-hmm. It's not a political project Mm -hmm. it's going to have elements of it sure um but i'm putting a positive spin on it Mm -hmm. because i feel like as a society right now we're so polarized yeah and it used to just be politics you can kind of turn it off if you don't agree with someone it is what it is you go watch sports you go listen to music Mm -hmm. and now i feel like it's leaked into music and it's leaked into sports where Mm -hmm. if you don't agree with someone you Mm -hmm. hate them yeah like i don't like that so yep. the point of this is just to find common ground. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about um, current events. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be just political events. Could be sports, music, um, pepperoni, um, just like random things. Yeah. Um, but it's the, the whole idea is to find common ground. I enjoy that. I think it's yeah. a cool, uh, yeah, cool segment. I think it's uh, it appreciates the wealth of diversity and humanity. I think it's an interesting yeah. place to. Uh, I think it also sets you on an interesting trajectory then of like. My my bread and butter here is gonna be talking to my friends. Yeah, and it sounds like for you the best content's gonna sound like come from having the polar opposite of your yeah. opinion on. So uh, in the context of pepperoni, you're gonna find someone who likes pineapple and hates pepperoni. Yeah, and I'm using that example because it's the safest of all the yeah, things no. you talked about to, yeah. <laughs> to pull the two polar opposites from. Yeah, um, but yeah, I think that, is that a thing you're comfortable with? You're expecting that? How is that? Yeah. So that so the first couple. So I I filmed the first one already. Hell yeah. Um, with a. Um, old friend mm-hmm. who we agree on a lot, but mm-hmm. also disagree on some things too. Mm-hmm. So it was more of a lighthearted kind of welcome to it. Mm-hmm. Um, we grew up the same, but mm-hmm. then as we got older, we kind of went on different paths. Mm-hmm. So I feel like since we have that route together, mm-hmm. getting back to that same path was kind of easy. Mm-hmm. So I kind of want to build up to having that person on that we don't mm-hmm. agree on anything, yeah. but I don't want it to be a change my mind kind of deal. I don't mm-hmm. need everyone to think like me. And I don't want to think like everyone else, but we can agree on some things. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the whole point of it. I appreciate that. I enjoy yeah. that. And I think it's an interesting kind of reemergence of long form media in a yeah. sense where I think at some point in time, this is what most broadcasts would have been. And then as yeah. things have gotten more centralized and more click oriented, exactly. uh, 
for a lot of great reasons, and there's a lot of benefits that come yeah. with that. But I think there is a and then a lack in, of 140 characters can only express so many yeah. ideas. And in an hour, we can express a lot more diverse and nuanced and yeah. uh, thoughtful ideas. And we can be yeah. much more uh, intentional about how we're saying we don't have to yeah pick 140 characters. We can say the controversial thing and support it with like, this is why I think that. So maybe exactly. it's not as controversial as it may initially appear in 140 characters. Yeah. Um, but I'm also, yeah, I think it's an interesting thing to then, uh, yeah, debate with the opposite and kind of figure out that middle ground and try and find, yeah, that yeah, world so different. Because I understand that politics will always be a hot button item and mm-hmm. not everyone wants to get involved in it. Yeah. But I kind of want this podcast to be something where someone that's not involved can mm-hmm. still listen mm-hmm. and appreciate the fact that we're trying to agree on something Mm -hmm. opposed to more of a debate, which we see all the time. You see it in like Facebook comments. Mm -hmm. You see it on the news. There's always just talking heads trying to just argue with each other. They're not they're they're, It's never productive. And even on the people that I like, I'm listening to the people I like because I agree with them. And Mm -hmm. it's like, is that productive for me? Yeah. I'm not learning anything. I'm Mm -hmm. just listening to someone that I, that I agree with. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's the hard part because, Going into something where you involve politics is tough. Yeah, so yeah. it's finding that that like groove in the in like the middle um, where mm-hmm. everyone can kind of enjoy it. The uh, the point you triggered in my brain there is I've been uh, I've been I was talking about I, ended up, I always end up talking about my rap obsession on this podcast. Right? Yeah. But most of what I listen to is bad drill rap, uh, and one of those genres is from Chicago. And there's a yeah. big rap scene coming out of Chicago. Uh, and there's a documentary that came out recently about a currently deceased rapper. Uh, and the documentary uh, goes through a lot of his lyrics and alleges that he killed people and not just in a way that makes him a killer, but in a way that makes him a serial killer and that he yeah. meets these criteria of not just doing this thing out of necessity, but doing it for fun as a sport, as a game. Interesting. Um, and so it's polarizing. And of course, there is then both sides of the debate of like uh, this documentarian who's a white kid from England is like obviously not yeah. the the person you'd expect to talk about Chicago, but it is well thought out. And it seems in my opinion, well, well researched and careful and it's, uh, as clickbait as it needs to be, but it does seem genuine and honest in that sense. Yeah. But the follow up there was an interesting conversation between the documentarian and someone on the streets of Chicago yeah. and someone from Chicago was saying, Hey, people are dying because of this video that you put on YouTube. And yeah. this guy's saying, well, if I don't talk about it, then who will? Yeah. And it was, I think to your point of the common ground sense, it was interesting to watch these two guys who live quite literally across the world from yeah. each other. <laughs> And are on so very different sides of this issue, yeah. but they were at least on FaceTime together, chatting through this thing. Yeah. And it wasn't. I don't think they're going to hang out together ever again. No. <laughs> but it was interesting to, yeah, to be able to watch these two kind of opposites. And I think to your to your common ground point, it's like if we can create more spo- more space and more forums for these yeah. uh, conversations to exist, then yeah, I don't know if it solves the problem in that space, but it gives an opportunity to pursue solutions to the problem. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you, one, you got to be open to it. Mm-hmm. You got to be open to having those conversations with someone that you don't agree with. Yeah. Um, so I think as humans, we naturally are already thinking of what we want to say next before mm-hmm. we even listen to what they're about to say. Mm-hmm. And that's what led to just this ongoing debate that we have where you're just constantly trying to change someone's mind mm-hmm. or just trying to prove your own point where um, – like those two guys, they would have never met in any yeah. other aspect of life yeah. if they weren't doing this one thing. Yeah. Um, and I think that's healthy. Yeah. I mean, even if nothing comes of it, just the attempt is is already healthy enough. Or noble, yeah. yeah. Um, I also like, uh, shoot, I had a great segue there from something you said that triggered part two in my brain, and it just <laughs> evaded me. Oh, um, how did the, uh, how's it been? Like, what was how was the experience of recording the first episode you kind of mentioned of, uh, yeah, politics can be scary. It can be a hard yeah. thing to bring up. Like, what was your experience in bringing the first episode? And it's your first time having to be vulnerable on the microphone and yeah. take a chance and say the so yeah, say the thing that maybe isn't the most comfortable thing to say in a public forum. Yeah. So I definitely thought about that, which is why my first guest was my like oldest friend. Yeah. So there wasn't a lot of like nervousness there because we've mm-hmm. been having these conversations together for years. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was more of a comforting. Uh, choice for me yeah. so it'll be interesting once it actually drops to see the to see the response to it mm-hmm. but I feel like I've always been pretty open on social media of how I feel about certain pol- you know certain um, election and politics and stuff so it's not anything that's necessarily foreign to me so people won't be super surprised mm-hmm. but that 
that first conversation I have with the person that I don't agree with will definitely be a little bit nerve wracking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, from a technical side, from a, yeah, you mentioned the podcast is a new experience, a new yeah. forum. Was it, uh, at some point you mentioned that it's when you're talking to people, the natural thing is to think of what you're going to say next. Yeah. And for me, that's been the hardest part of this process yeah. is trying to actually have a conversation. And it's yeah. like, I have notes, I do have questions and things I want to talk about. But I think the best version of this is using those as like a, an emergency ripcord yeah. and having most of what I do be just what I would normally say and think to you. Yeah. But it's as weird of like you say something, I have a thought. And it's like, oh, that's a good question. Let me hold that. But I also want to keep following you. Yeah. And maybe there's another good question. And uh, yeah. How was your experience? Yeah, it was, it was weird at first. So since a couple of my questions are a little bit heavy, mm -hmm. I actually send the questions to them beforehand. Okay. Yep. Not all of them because mm -hmm. we're obviously going to segue off of things and mm -hmm. it comes into in different points and different topics, but yeah. a couple of the hard hitting questions I mm -hmm. gave them already just mm -hmm. so they don't come in kind of blind to mm -hmm. this like important topic that we're going to talk about. Like this is just a more free flowing conversation mm -hmm. that was, you know, I wanted them to kind of research it so they don't feel like they're on the spot too. Mm -hmm. So that kind of made it easier. So they were kind of already prepped for, um, you know, those big things I was going to ask them. So then we were able to kind of stem off of it mm -hmm. and it turned into more of a of, a, of like a healthy back and forth. Hell yeah. So what can people expect from a standard episode? Is it going to be half an hour, an hour? Is it going to be 10 questions, five questions? Yeah, I, it's still kind of up in the air. So that first one was just to kind of test it. Mm -hmm. So the first one, it's about 45 minutes um, after I cut out some things. So mm -hmm. about 45 minutes. Because there is that same thing we were kind of mentioning earlier was there are some things. I'm like, oh, maybe you shouldn't have said that. So I'm going to mm -hmm. cut, <laughs> edit that out. But um, I'm open to not having it be a set time mm -hmm. slot or you know set amount of questions it's just we're gonna talk until we can't talk anymore yeah and i have a couple friends that if i don't stop them it'll be two <laughs> three hours so maybe you'll have an episode that's that long i have i have no idea i've enjoyed that it'll be good i enjoy the in this i've enjoyed the pursuit of deep water is what i've called it yeah. of like there's uh there is an amount of time we can be who we want to be yeah and there's an amount of time where that's no longer possible and you're forced to be yourself because you've been performing for so long that yeah. you kind of yeah, have to default back to you. Yeah. Um, so I think it's interesting, especially in the context of a, a political show where it can be challenging to get through or challenging to talk about these things. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. To give it in an open forum where the thing has room to expand as needed yeah. and shift as needed, I think is really valuable there. Yeah. It's cool to find because as long as you're open with who's going to be on of what mm -hmm. you're going to talk about, then yeah. they're comfortable with it. Because I have some people that I would love to have on, but... Mm -hmm politics isn't their thing sure so it's just like that is fine mm -hmm. well, we can find common ground on something else mm -hmm. um but it's harder yeah. because especially if they're a friend yeah. if it's not politics they're usually going to agree on most things mm -hmm. so um that will also be a challenge too to find other topics oh yeah um how do you find time for all this stuff? So we've got <laughs> graphic design, we've got music, we've got a podcast coming, we've got a four-month-old yep. uh, who is adorable. Congratulations Thank on you. all the successes there. I know Thank it's been you. a... Uh, tumultuous or challenging experience, but yes. I'm sure it's been very rewarding from what you said. Yeah. Um, but yeah, how are you managing to find the time for all these different endeavors and keep keep Nick in a situation? Yeah, I don't even know. It just kind of happens. Mm -hmm. I have these ideas for things, and I just, whenever there's a slot, I just mm -hmm. slide it in. Um, it, it, I wish I had a method to it because mm -hmm. I got some friends that could probably use the help. Mm -hmm. They're like, man, how do you do all that? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I wish I could tell you. Um, the baby makes it a little more challenging. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it, it's it's a weird I, – I always laughed at the parents that said, oh, it changes you and it's so different. And I'm like, is it really that different? Now I'm like, it absolutely is. Okay. And like every joke I made about them in the past, I like instantly regret because my entire perspective on everything I do is completely altered now. I'm still the same exact person, mm -hmm. but the reasons why I do things, it's all for her now. And that's like a crazy thought. Yeah. Um, I want to do more – um, and everything I do because in hopes that it will inspire her when she's older to do That's things, to do the things she wants to do or show her that I'm constantly working hard for the things that I want and the things I enjoy and that I make time for the things I enjoy. So it, it's, it's weird. I can't really like put it fully into words, mm -hmm. but coming home from work or coming home from like the show or the band and knowing that, you know, I still get to see her when I go home. It's, it's just, it's, it's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, it's so cool. That's cool. Uh, yeah, it's an incredible experience that yeah. I, yeah, uh, 
I uh, completely foreign to me. It's completely unimaginable, yeah. and I'm sure, yeah, it's it's you 18 months ago or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's incredible, and I think it's just interesting. I think it also strikes me as like it, it forces me to accept that I am also that kid, and yeah. I am also that thing that someone looked at. Um, and I'm saying that laughing because I know my parents listen to this; so they're going to yeah. hear that, and it's going to be a conversation. <laughs> yeah, so absolutely. thank you guys. I appreciate you taking care of me. Yeah. The way Nick is taking care of his little one. Um, but yeah, it is kind of a wild thing as you, as I hear my friends talk about this little thing. It's like, oh fuck that! That's me also. Like this yeah. is someone talked about me like that. Oh yeah, I mean, I think I did a good job at appreciating what my mom and dad have mm-hmm. done for me. But I mean, those first like couple months, my um, my in-laws and also my mom. I mean, they were mm-hmm. over all the time helping and mm-hmm. um, I was like, man, I'm so sorry for every little thing that I ever did to you <laughs> but for my entire life because it's so crazy and yeah. it's just, yeah, it's just, um, it's a whole new perspective and I'm glad that I can talk to Sean about it mm-hmm. um, because I don't have a lot of friends that have kids. So mm-hmm. it's cool that we're in the same space. We're in the same band. We're doing the same thing. So mm-hmm. um, we can kind of bounce ideas off each other. And it, it's, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Address some of the insecurities and realize that, yeah. Uh, yeah, some of the things we're scared of are common to other yeah. parents and unique. Yeah. Not necessarily unique to us. Um, hell yeah, dude. We are, I think we're getting to about a good spot. We're probably like 45, 50 ish minutes. Cool. Um, anything? Oh, solo projects. We did yeah. not touch on solo projects too much. Yeah. <laughs> as if the yeah. as if we had <laughs> have enough things for to work on, dude. Uh, so we got half hearted. Yeah, the solo project is I believe it's more like pop punk ish. It's more yeah. of like the core stuff there. Yep. Is that still something that is active? Still something that we should expect more music from? Yeah. Soon? Yeah. So I used to be um, a little more like regimen with it, mm-hmm. and now it's something that I do as a hobby, just mm-hmm. to kind of if I have an idea that wouldn't fit for what I'm doing in half hearted, which most of them don't, um, I'll just use that as my as, as my outlet. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have a couple songs that are in the works that should be out in the summertime. Um, but nothing too, nothing too crazy with it. You said the word regimented and it triggered as we were going back to the busy and time management. Are you a, yeah. are you a list person? How are you managing yeah. time? Is that, I am a huge notes app guy okay. and reminder app guy. Okay. Those are the things, I mean, it's heavily for my own, uh, full-time job too, mm-hmm. but, um, especially, so it's actually funny. So my, wife and I, we have a, a shared note, um, and we'll edit cool. stuff. Okay. So I'll be at work and I'll see that she edited and it's like, go to stop and shop and buy this. And I'm like, okay, now I know that I got to do that when I get home. That's cool. But it's cool. Now we, I could just check the, just check the app. Mm-hmm. Um, cause without that, I would be lost for sure. Interesting. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm a big, like, uh, I write everything down. My yeah. desk is like, I have colored sticky notes because somehow the color helps me like remember it. Yeah, so yeah. I see the blue and it's like, I don't even know what's written on the blue. I just know the blue sticky note means whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but as a result, it looks like there's just like vomit of confetti all over my yeah. desk of just all <laughs> these different colors from different yeah. like tropical packs and the default packs. Yeah. that now all just mix in one, one giant cluster. So I think a notes app or reminder app would be an upgrade yeah, for it's you. Huge. I mean, that's, that's my desk <laughs> in my office at, at work. Mm-hmm. It's just like notepads everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I try to convert it into my phone so it's easy to access, but you yeah, know, it's tough. Yeah. I've gotten good at centralizing it into like a notebook. So yeah. like I can just write everything, but like, yeah, that's the only way I can keep up with everything is writing yeah. it out and put it out of my brain and know that it's yep. put somewhere else. So I don't got to deal with it anymore. Yep. And I'm sure as you now have another life to take care of that need yeah. to get it out of your brain becomes even There's more important. There's a whole like chunk of that note that's just for her. It's like, make sure mm-hmm. she eats it this time and does Hell this yeah. and does that. And you're like, okay, got it. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Um, awesome, dude. So what can people look out for, look forward to? Uh, I think we've covered a couple of things, but yeah, yeah. For the, we'll start with the podcast. Uh, when is that coming out? What should people look for? Where can people find it? Yeah. What's going on there? So first episode, probably sometime next month. I don't have a, a, a set date yet. Um, it's Compod on Instagram, C-O-M-M-P-O-D. Um, it'll be on Spotify once that's out. Um, looking forward to that. Half-Hearted, probably another song sometime in June, Hell I'd yeah. say. Probably album end of the year. Oh, I would yeah. assume if I'm wrong, Jay, I'm sorry. My bad. Yeah, um, I believe that. I'm not going to believe it, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> sorry for not taking it out. But I don't have any anything confirmed. <laughs> um, and yeah, maybe some new solo stuff just for fun, but just going to stay busy and have some fun. Hell yeah, dude. Where can people find you? Where can people tell you they enjoyed you or didn't enjoy you on the yeah. episode? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, Instagram, you got at Nick Figlione. Hell yeah. Um, I'm usually on that every day. That's that. Awesome, dude. I appreciate you coming through. Yeah, thanks for having me. Stoked to hear the pod. Stoked to hear New Half Hearted. Stoked to make life happen. Stoked to get into that art project behind you. Yeah, right. (laughs) (laughs) We'll go from there. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, man. Cut that.